name is Jesse Mbuthia. I'm from Kibumo constituency. I have had a decade history in addiction and alcoholism actually. And indeed a very painful journey uh, experience which you cannot wish even your own enemy. It started immediately after my KCSE. I started it for leisure and I was taking it with my colleagues just for, to enjoy ourselves. I never at any point thought that it could lead me to the bottom of the pit I found myself. At Egerton, I was expelled. This was due to perpetual drunkardness in my third year. After that, I got more depressed. Having left my village as the best boy after KCP, the hopes that I build in the society members. KCSE and scoring a strong B+, plus, missing A- minus by a point, and uh, the expectations the people around me, my family members, I could not escape the guilt that I had disappointed these people. I was now preparing myself for a harsh life, life without education. I became hopeless, absolutely hopeless. It was not easy to come to terms to that hopelessness. I had to seek solace somewhere. That is when I got to alcohol deeply and deeply. I unfortunately could not afford the right type of beers. I was deeply hooked in the illicit liquors. The concussion of the second generation, which you could not understand. Today you take two packets, sachets of the same, tomorrow you take one, and you could uh, not manage your life at all at all. Plus some um, prescribed drugs which I could obtain freely from some chemists <coughs> to sustain my highness. Actually there were some meats around my home area that have been bewitched. Everybody was blaming me. I decided to run away from those blames. I found my best place in the streets. From there, I could get some menu chops, could do the cleaning of verandas, cleaning of the bars, cleaning of the beba beba businesses around. I started it as a leisure, but today it has become a regret. Unfortunately, I may not be in a position to tell because I take anything, including leftovers, by people. People had branded me a, an insane man because I neglected hygiene. Taking a shower was an issue. I had sold all my clothing. I could run to the bus. There were some, my, some of my brothers who could bring me some clothes to put on. And immediately they left, I could exchange them for Lalika. Kama uge muona fili ya likuwa wa neni pobe tu ilime muharibu. A uchafu muanagu ni kuerese, nilikuwa na osangu, na jaripu kutafutia kwa my cousins, wa mpatie guo. Iyo sogu ikikuja inakuja imeraruka, na asa nafua, watu wa menadharau, saigine kiatu wakuna. The money, I've now been relieving on rugs. Rugs, rugs, and beba beba living at Kiguma. Eh, haki mabo ire ni mepitia. Aga, hi, hi. Nirikuwa na stress nyingi sana. Najua musasi ni kuona mtote yako. Haina anaedrea misa msuri. Ajitegeme. Every of my family member has paid a price for my life in alcoholism. My mother retirement package went into my addiction, trying to rehabilitate it, and she lost.
tulikuwa tumeenda magari kuenda huko ule daktari alikuwa huko akatuambia kuna rehab nzuri sana iko huko western naitwa asubi treatment center huko tena nikampeleka nikazaribu kutafuta pesa pesa ilikuwa nyingi huko na kamarisa kuwa mzuri sasa nikahisiwa na kila kitu nilikuwa na ya Mungu kama nimi nimemkosea unisemehe uni I lost complete meaning of life. I didn't even know why I was living. Actually, the last two years of my drunkenness, I was not taking it to get high. I was doing it to die. There was a time I cried a full day to my God. I demanded that he either brings an end to the struggle or take my life. At that time, I had already prepared my eulogy. My name is uh, Isaac Festers Andungu. Uh, I'm 46 years old. Morning, class. Morning. Currently, I'm uh, teaching at uh, Jambini Glamour Secondary School. By profession, I'm a trained teacher. Uh, but I've been having a problem with, with uh, alcoholism all the way from when I finished my, my Form 6. And then uh, slowly, I started taking a sip or two during social occasions. Then uh, as I entered university, there's what was popularly known as uh, the boom. So I had money to finance uh, my drinking, uh, uh, at least partially. And then finally, once I landed my employment, uh, I continued with that trend, not knowing that actually I had a problem with alcoholism. The person, uh, Dr. Fortitia, the CNS, the same thing you want. The year 2005, after having a number of transfers, eventually I was dismissed from service. And then due to that uh, frustration, I actually sank lower, uh, taking all sorts of uh, drink which will come into my way. It's what you call I hit rock bottom. Now I didn't have any finance. Being the second born, uh, our first born uh, uh, is the late but also it was due to also to the question of uh, alcoholism. I actually topped uh, in the final, that is O-level. And then proceeded to A-level. A-level, I was among the top who qualified to enter university. My sister, the only sister following me and my two younger brothers. Obviously they, they were looking up on me. And then all of a sudden, this let down. You can't do anything. In fact, I'm the one who's begging them to, to help me. See, everybody was very, very much disappointed with me. <coughs> I was just there in the, in the estates, taking the second gen generation alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, people actually could not believe that uh, this is the, the teacher we used to know. You know, you've, you've, you've let yourself lose. You've given up hope. So I tended to isolate myself and drown my sorrows in alcohol, not knowing that actually I'm progressing in my disease. My mother had pity on me. The kind of motherly love which every mother will have, I will ask for a few coins here and there. And of which now uh, she saw that if at all she didn't give me the few coins, it will have meant that I will have resorted to other means and these other means it's obviously crime. So to uh, avoid that, she used to give me uh, to an extent of where, but even if I got a pound, that was okay because the moment I entered those funny, funny places, then a pound was enough to kickstart me. So at times I'll, I'll sleep there, at times I'll be taken home, or at times I find myself home without knowing how I ended up reaching home. <laughs> I was a wreck. Formerly, I was not comfortable in my own skin unless I used something. You don't drink to get drunk. You drink to, to stabilize. There is this kind of fear which all alcoholics have, indefinable fears. Just a slight sound of something, you're afraid. You call my name, I'm afraid. But it's only on the later stages that now I realized I have a problem and I need help. And at one particular time, I went to Kenyatta, thinking that I had been diagnosed by typhoid. And they told me the truth, that this is not typhoid. That you're suffering from substance abuse.
My name is Sergeant Moses Kimencho. I'm an administration police officer. I'm currently working at Moranga County Headquarters. Apart from uh, being a police officer, I'm an addiction counselor. I normally talk to police officers on the issues of drug and substance abuse, to schools, to churches, and that is our mandate, just to save life and property. Sergeant Moses Kimenchu is an ordinary police officer, but with an extraordinary story. Despite negative stories about police officers, some like Sergeant Kimenchu do their job well and are willing to go above and beyond the call of duty to serve people. Sergeant Kimenchu wears a totally different hat. There are so many challenges within the community, within the society, whereby people take alcohol, people take tobacco, people take cigarette. The time I entered in the forces, I also find the same the, the issue. Whereby police officers, they are abusing alcohol, they are taking the leftovers, the changa. And many police officers have lost their job because of alcoholism and drug abuse. I had a brother who used to take alcohol. And once when he come at home, everybody has to go. If you are not affected, you are infected. Inspired by these incidences, in 2011, Sergeant Kimenchu enrolled for a short course on drug and substance abuse. Because I have the uh, counseling skills, then I came here, I said I have to give back to the community. The DEO told me, even there is a person who is always lies here at Kigumo, Kigumo Center. Why don't you market center? Why don't you go and visit him? Any time you see an Askari in uniform, uh, you think that he's coming to arrest you because due to the many blackouts in the use, you are not able to tell, to connect your activities of the previous day. Sergeant Kimenchu, my friend, was able to arrest my condition. That is, he immediately on first sight was able to realize that I was facing some depression or frustrations. He introduced to me the option of a rehabilitation center, but I, uh, originally I was resisting, suggesting a sustained program of my drinking. But uh, probably, God will, by good luck, we were able to strike a consensus later. After evaluating it, I found it, it had got only two options, bringing an end to the struggle or death so nothing was outside my options. We had to buy some hard stuff to carry with us to the rehabilitation center because I had reached a point where if I missed some liquor, I could get a complication of an epileptic kind. Fits. I could follow. I am pleading with all well wishers, including my friends here, that they submit the following, that we join hands together in fighting that characteristic of being a necessity to being a luxury and a lesser luxury or even a bigger quit. If assisted, I promise total productivity in this country and I will be in a position to give back not only to my people but also to the larger community members. On the 12th of December 2012, Jesse was taken to the Fountain of Hope Rehabilitation Center by well wishers who were concerned for his welfare. A three month treatment program got him off the addiction that had ruined his life. After rehabilitation, the surgeon used to engage me in many counseling sessions. Within the first month, I realized that I had afforded personally to buy my own phone. Wow, I realized it is also possible to put on a new, a good trouser. I realized I could regain my esteem. Within no time, I could get some appreciation from people. It's very hard to forgive yourself. And that is what many people have been struggling to. And you see, if you fail to forgive yourself, you live in bitterness. But the best thing about myself is that I've been able to achieve that. Now, Nasasa, 
hata ako karibu kujitegemea si suguri kinae sana kama wakati huo mwingine junasikia na rara msu sasa ningeambia wasasi wapende watoto wao hata wakiwa na mna gani i always feel as a father i love just because first born always you love first born that transformation from kagosha from lying on the street from taking alcohol from taking leftovers it encouraged me it given me also hope that really people can change i believe i'm a role model i'm a there demonstration that there is a, one can change i have also demonstrated resilience my sister who was working in Moranga uh, she introduced me to sergeant Kimenchu came all the way up to home had a word or two uh, with me uh, Rose, you could not imagine because as i told me mm. you mean uh, you mean i'm sick i told him yes i said you are sick and to show him some grip on people who have changed to co- just a convincing power sick of being enslaved by his addiction isaac finally decided to try out rehabilitation to see if it could set him free i've had uh, a number of accidents uh, due to the effect of alcohol one <coughs> of them uh, falling down from a stair and also I've dislocated my arm all what I will uh, request is to get assistance uh, from any any quarter I decided to to talk to well wishers I then by I talked to a certain lady uh, called Joyce and he accepted uh, he offered just an offer just a well wisher I did not pay anything that's when I took uh, Isaac to Uh, rehabilitation after one month since his case came to the limelight isaac received an outpouring of support from well wishers and was checked into bridge center ridge's rehabilitation center in garden estate where he stayed for three months receiving therapy counseling and medical assistance yes it was hard uh, mentally to adjust myself also body bodily to adjust myself but the medicine which are, you are being given administered at least uh, made life bearable despite the many challenges which are there it is not that that easy being confined and also the withdrawals the part of it you know also you lacking sleep you have to induce the sleep through the the medicine it is an experience which has partly hardened me partly made me to realize who i am and what i'm capable of formally the addiction had blinded me the effects of uh, addiction god had given me this chance i'm still alive abusing drugs didn't apart from just guiding uh, students when it comes to uh, abuse that is where now we have for example what the way people inject their bodies with what heroin okay also the friends whom i was drinking with even some of them approach me uh, aizo ulifanya nini what did you do to come out of this Obviously like I cannot keep quiet. If somebody stretches his hand he wants to get out of there, then also stretch yourself and pull the person out instead of condemning the person. Likewise, if somebody didn't stretch her hand, where will I be? Sincerely, where will I be? Uh, Isaac is my second born. Let me see. Isaac has really reformed. He's very much conversant and he knows what is addiction. I'm very much proud of Isaac because he is not someone who says that I lost everything. Isaac is now marking his third year of sobriety. He's currently working as a volunteer teacher at Jambini Glamour Secondary School in Kinangop, Nyandarua County. Okay, thank you very much. A sergeant Kimenchu is a man of action. 
Today, he's checking on Faiza Wanjiru, a recovering alcoholic. <laughs> Faiza is among hundreds of recovering alcoholics who underwent a 90-day drug and alcohol rehabilitation program at Yoro Stadium in Moranga, set up by the county government. Faiza's life has been spent under the influence of alcohol. Her relationship with booze began early. During my teenage age, through Marafiki, I didn't introduce Marakwanza. As in Italy, that one I did go out to a pub and many packs. That I was in a cocoa to make a karatasi. The next day, I came back to my dog and I went to a soda. Gradually, she got hooked up and started spending time in Bruden's. I did a party. That's when I got jobless. Seen a pesa. I can't get this pub. I'm just saying I'm going to go out and I can't get a pub. It's a fifty bob. During that time, I was a bit addicted to the drugs. 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 Faiza rarely went without a drink. I was a bit addicted to my life. I was a bit addicted to the drugs. I was a bit addicted to the drugs. Once I was a bit addicted to the drugs, I was a bit addicted. Hizo kikosa baka unanza kujikula kula, unanza kujiuma damu, ndio uvuta hile damu usikia ni kama artisti meza kuvuta kitu. Nikuwa nimeingia katika dinawe ya ni nimejikubali ya ni nimeona tu mimi, ulevi ndio yume nikubali. Her personal life suffered too. Nimesumbua familia yetu for a long time, sababu kama two or three. Nikuwa nimefungu katika gereza, nikuwa nimepigana, nimengwana menu. Watu yetu wa distrago sana, ndio oweze kuweza kulipa sababu ilikuwa ikibidi sometimes wanashika kitu wanauza ndio waweza kuja kunitoa Faiza alikuwa nalisubua sana nilikuwa na busi ina gausa juu yake alikuwa nakujwa na tukanana kavigwa kavere kwa volizi kotini aliyacha mtoto ala mwaka moja na mesitano Dibimi gale ya mtoto, kapupereka nasari, tasasa mtoto ya kopopuziri. Hii mungu niliumia juu ya vaisa. Kusikia kuna mchitana na aguka toto. Atidiyei. Kakibia, kaguka. Kalibika mungu. Ngoni grati mide. The cycle of alcohol-induced hopelessness and despair persisted until when she met Sergeant Kimenchu in 2015. I approached Faiza and told her, please, I'm taking you to the rehabilitation center because I have heard information about you. Uh, take time and understand me. I know that I was a scary person. So I was a scary person. 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 I was a vile alikuja mimi ni dhania nimepata mtu tu akunimulia kiroro sasa mimi nikuongea na mimi nikamwambia mimi kwanza pengine unibaye te hii ndio niweza kuongea na wewe na wewe sasa kanipeleka garihab within siku ya tatu nilikuwa ninaanguka huko hakuna kitu nashika na ngoanywele kwa hivyo ilipata ilikuwa wakati mgumu sana kwangu kuwa nina recover nikaingia sasa katika the 12 of steps of alcoholic anonymous i came to believe that my life has become powerless and unmanageable Step two, you ask the higher power to restore you to sanity. Unona yu wenda wazimu likuwa na yu mungu wa kusaidia. Sababu uwe peke yako wezi. Mbaka mungu wa ingili, ingili ya kate. Then step three, na kwa gabao the decision making. Now I have already made a decision. Nime surrender maisha yangu. So katika hile step, unendele, unendele. Step four, waga ya muhimu sana about the moral inventory, the sentiment, assets, relationship. Api wa manadada. After being in the rehab for more than three months, Faiza graduated in December 2015. Eleven months later, Faiza is still sober, proudly so. Sana na maisha yangu ni mzuri sababu wazini. Ata kuna watu kutana na wawo, na shindo ni kuolewa uliolewa, ama ni nini. Ni meanza kufutia watu wengi mbaka naona, ni kuwele mtu anaiza change. So ni mekua example. Sasa ni mwishana mjuri. Ata kivata buwana olewe, ni mzuri. Hii ni second chance ni lipata. There and before she was a suspect. Faiza is a changed person. Kama mimi, nimevuta bangi mpaka imefika padi kwa imeniguzanini. We go with her to schools, to youth forums, and also to the churches, just to speak to people. 
Joseph Madenge is a recovering alcoholic. This pink cloud period is undoubtedly enjoyable. Now aged 45, he reflects on a life that has been dominated and destroyed by alcohol. I started taking alcohol after the university. Madenge has a law degree from the University of Nairobi School of Law. He graduated in 1998 and was admitted at the bar as an advocate of the High Court in 1999. He worked with two law firms in Nairobi, but alcohol took over his life and he could no longer hold down a job. Forced to give up work in 2001, Madenge relocated back to his rural home in Tetu, near the county, broke and jobless, Madenge opted to work as a tea plucker. That's when his drinking spiraled out of control. Uh, when I got a some little money, I would go out and drink uh, because I was stressed. I, I just wanted to get drunk. He spent 13 years picking tea, but his life took a dramatic change when he met Sergeant Kimenchu. Because of trust and also public confidence eh, that I have within the community, a certain man came in my office. He told me that there's a lawyer who is deeply uh, into depression. It was really difficult to talk to him and also for him to open. It was very difficult because he was quoting uh, chapters in the, in, the, in, the, in the Constitution. Why am I after him? Madenge told me I have to take Haloko. Uh, in the evening, uh, early in the morning, and also at lunch hour. The people who were living with him, was, they were calling him the tea picker advocate. What I discovered out of it, uh, Madenge needed someone who could work with him. Destiny Ministry International uh, Church in Thika has been supporting Madenge in his recovery journey. A 90-day treatment program at Jamie Bora Rehabilitation Center between June and September this year got him off the addictive habit. In the rehab, he met different calibers of people. He met a, a, an accountant who was a, a, a managing director of a bank. Uh, he met genius people there. And he, he learned that he was not alone in the bush. Therefore, the time they were sharing with those different people with those deep, different uh, scenarios, that when he, he started accepting, oh, so I have a problem, so I'm not alone. That three-year journey has transformed Madenge from the near less human being that he was to a man you can engage into a, in a conversation. My passion is in, in practicing the law. Our goal as a church when it comes to lawyer Madenge is to see him get back his lost life. Two is to get him back to the corridors of justice as a practicing lawyer or magistrate so that the years that he spent in school will be rewarded. <laughs> yeah. Madenge says he is finally free of a problem that had ruined his life. Recovering from alcoholism and drug addiction is possible, even in the very late stages. Even when families are in great distress, the first step is understanding the afflicted person as a sick person, not necessarily a bad person. Society generally has this kind of uh, stigma, uh, a negative attitude towards an alcoholic. Give that person a chance and they'll be productive in society. It's only a problem, a sickness, which they, they, ha they have to be guided how to handle it. Ati mtu na unamenda kazi ya mepata tupesa kama uto kidogo, amenza kukunywa siku penda kwake, ni vida addiction pali ili mfiki, na ni vida mwili wake unamuonesha sababu. Mimi kuna padi yata kikombe singe maliza, kama ni asubi ni kwa ni kitu aloko, mbaka ushikiliwa hivi sababu kikunywa mbaka, ile unatatemeka mbaka ya kwanza iingie. To ensure the rehabilitation program's outcome remains sustainable, Faiza enrolled at Itega Polytechnic, where she's currently pursuing a hairdressing course. She describes this new chapter of her life 
as her first real taste of true freedom in years, and she's adamant she will not fall off the wagon. Once when they are out, if they, get, they, they don't get someone to, to, to walk with them, they can also relapse. It's a challenge. So malayati, it's not a simple thing. It is a fight. It is a war. And it is not a easy war. It is not a easy battle. It needs a lot of artillery. It needs a lot of weapons. It, is, it needs a lot of sophisticated uh, materials to, to tackle addiction. Temptations will be there. They are there all around. All, all the way from the, from the screen, the sitting room, everywhere, wherever you are going, they are there. But then what tactics do you have? What skills do you have to know that I should do this and not do this? As we are PPTs, people, places and things, so the better way now, the best place for me, I in institution. She's one of our best students. She also advises the other student because as you, as you look at them, they are younger than her. And I really like her because she's determined to do what she's doing. After rehab, 34-year-old Jesse was able to put together the battered pieces of his life. He joined Mount Kenya University and graduated in July 15th with a degree in banking and finance. He was joined by his family, relatives and friends as they celebrated his new achievement. He graduated with first class honors. I'm the most excited person. It's a success, not only my success, but a success of any person suffering down there because he, can, he or she can draw some hope. Fighting addiction requires a great deal of inner strength. Sergeant Kimenchu has been helping struggling alcoholics seek treatment and regain control of their lives. No matter how hopeless the situation may seem, some of the people he's mentored are unrecognizable compared to the former person they were in the midst of the addiction. Sergeant Kimenchu's effort cannot be replaced by any recruitment in any part of the world. This is a special person to those people who have lost hope completely. And stories like that abound in this area about the sergeant, the unsung hero who has been rehabilitating alcoholics even in life's toughest moments. Members of the public, there before they were seeing me as if I'm a stranger. Maybe I'm trying to investigate something, but they have come to learn that. I did not come to just to investigate, I'm trying to help them. I don't charge. This is, I just give, uh, give services free of charge. According to the National Authority for the Campaign Against Alcohol and Drug Abuse, more than 6,000 individuals die annually due to alcohol-related problems. 15% of Kenyans aged between 15 and 64 consume Chang'a. The data further indicates that 40% of Kenyans aged 15 and 64 have tasted alcohol, while 13% of people from all provinces, except northern Kenya, consume alcohol. <laughs> Underage and rural children have not been spared. According to Nakada, rural children are more likely to have consumed traditional liquor and changa than urban children. 12% of children aged between 15 and 24 drink alcohol. Nairobi has the highest number of alcohol users in the 15 to 65 age cluster at 22%, followed by the Rift Valley at 15.7%.
Eastern at 14.6% and Central Kenya is fourth at 10%. 2.5 million people require professional intervention in form of treatment and rehabilitation. There are only 77 centers in the country offering this vital service, but only three are run by the government. The rest are privately owned. Recovering alcoholics require an average of 140,000 shillings to procure these services. According to Nakada, 4 million Kenyans countrywide consume illicit liquor. <laughs> Central Kenya has been uniquely affected by alcoholism and proliferation of illicit brews, which has led to a drastic drop in the productivity of young men in the region. <laughs> In addition, the report reveals that 60% of alcohol abusers hit the bars before noon, the most productive hours of the day, which explains low work and decline in economic activity in the region. Last year, President Uhuru Kenyatta ordered a crackdown on the production and sale of the highly toxic and destructive brews in the country. The fight against illicit brews began in central region because it was the worst hit. More than 4 million liters of second generation liquor was destroyed. In Kiambu County alone, more than 400,000 liters was destroyed. <laughs> While in Moranga County, more than 2.3 million liters of the liquor was destroyed. The fight against the killer brew has borne fruit and many youth have stopped drinking. Now the members of the public, they are bringing information. Therefore we are happy because after that, after that crackdown, the level of addiction, the level of illicit brews, it's very down. Kwa sheria tumejaribu kukangana na wao na imekuwa shida sana wakati mwingine. Shauri unapata wakati mwingine hata ukiwashika wengine wana uwezo wa kujilipia fine kule kwa kotini. Alafu akirudi nyumbani bado wanazidi kutengeneza ama kuitumia pia. However, despite the drive, illicit brew is still being manufactured and consumed in some areas. You remove the product but the urge in the person and the longing you haven't removed. So the person will always be after that substance. But then on top of that, provide education of uh, substance abuse, addiction, both in the schools to the affected, that is the addicts and the general public. Then we'll be in a very good position of fighting off illicit liquor. We just found that there was an inflow of a million numbers of different hard stuff. They're really cheap and really affordable to many people who, have, who are nursing frustrations of joblessness and many others. There should be a lot done to ensuring that the youths and the jobless are engaged. Just speak to me, I've done this You have come here near ago, you know. I'm a fighter. I normally take this initiative very serious and very courageous. Driven by a passion to save young people from alcohol and drugs, Kimencho has put up a spirited campaign to create awareness. He visits primary and secondary schools, preaching against alcohol and substance abuse. Yes. Good afternoon, class. Mambo, <laughs> He takes a keen interest in the classes about to sit their national exams, class 8 and form 4. Eh? Pombe! Siki tuingine! He believes in creating a drugs-free society which can only be achieved if the young people are cushioned. Sasa ukiwa waterlocked na pombe, sasa pombe inaanza ku, kukupereka. Kukundirect. Anywhere that you only want to go. Once when you take bangi, hallucinogen drug, mostly it affects the brain, the thinking capacity, concentration, una lose, the thinking always negative.
Leonie Mari. During the sessions, he uses teaching aids such as pictures and videos to help students understand the hazardous effects of using any drug into their bodies. Kimenchi says boys are more vulnerable to drug addiction than girls. Heroin, it's also a stimulant drug, and even cocaine, and also mandrags. In fact, they are stimulant drugs. I have decided together to join Sergeant Kimenchu in... JC is now a motivational speaker who talks to high school students by sharing his own experience with alcoholism and how to avoid the destructive path to addiction. If I got a chance and age to be at Form 3, I would focus my life. I would aim higher. It's better you are able to understand all the consequences and information about drugs and alcohol so that if you have not started using you can resolve never to attempt kamata angusha very good so far he has visited more than 30 schools within moranga county when i joined the population of the school was at 47 students from form one to form four the society was not taking education seriously and I realized one of the reasons was because of the abuse of drugs and alcohol. Hallucinogen drugs. Sergeant Kemencho, he has been to their school severally and we have noted a big change in attitude because he equips them with knowledge and skills. That population has been able to rise very fast within two years from 47 students to 200 currently. <laughs> walikuwa wanatengeneza hapo mbeleni kwa maboma zao unapata watoto kama ni wa shule wenye tumekuwa na wao sasa wamekuwa wameambukizwa hiyo tambia mbaya wengine wanapata wanakunywa wanatumia hizo madawa ya kulevia hivi kwamba hata inakuwa ni shida kwa wao kusoma ni kuwa ni shida Some 60 kilometers from Eldoret town lies Kokwet village in Moiben constituency. Wasingishu County. The sound of nature signifies a new day. Hilary Rono is a former police officer. Today, he works as a mechanic. Rono takes us through the path down his fall into the abyss of alcoholism. Sergeant Kimenchu came to his rescue last year. By then, he realized he had to sort out his addiction, not just for himself, but also for the sake of his wife and children. I got an information about Mr. Rono through a friend whom we are working with. He told me that there is a, a former police officer who is at home and he has been nicknamed Mororai. The time I met Irari here, Irari was really down. He could not even talk. I told him that I'm here just to help you and we can work together. In June 2015, Rono was taken to Serenity Springs Rehabilitation Center in Nyeri. The rehab made all the difference for him in recovery, he says. It provided a respite and safe haven and a place to be connected to others. Rehab, 
Rona says he is free from the bondage of addiction. Tangu nitoke Ria mwezi wa 2015 sijai kunywa pombe tena. Maisha yangu yamebadilika sana. Hata ile pesa nilikuwa na sijui kutumia sasa ni asa safe pesa. Pia nikafanya maneno ya driving. Ametusumbua sana. Amekunywa pombe, amekuwa na stress mingi kupata hata kikombe naweza enda naye aye auze ili apate pesa ya kuonja pombe peke yake. Amekuwa mtu mzuri. Paka sasa tunaona ni mtu ambaye anaweza kutegemea. Sasa mimi najaribu kupundisha kazi. I'm happy to see Mr. Hirari. He has a very good attitude right now. His self esteem is very high. Namshukuru sana na bado namshukuru kwa sababu aliyokuwa kwa kutoka mali mbaya sana. Like Kenyans in all other sectors of life, men and women in uniform have not been spared from the perils of alcoholism and substance abuse. Before it was a force. Where by everything was used using force. If a police officer is sent to do is to execute duties a little force was exercised but right now it is a service so before there were no counseling there was no addiction counselors there was no that empathy there was no that room of uh, maybe expression but right now there is that room we had a challenge and we had a gap to me this is the gap that i realized Police officers witness traumatic and disturbing events. From watching someone take their last breath to discovering corpses that have been mutilated in ways no sane human could comprehend. There before, there was no debriefing on what you are going to meet in the field. People were just taught how they are going to fight Sujui, Ari Sabab, they are going to, to get handshape, Sujui, what areas. They were not taught how to cope with the challenges that they are going to get. If it comes to maybe to finances, also the time we were the force, it was not all that well. But we are happy, something is, we are smearing something. You find people who are dead, no cancering. What will happen to that police officer? He will cock. He will go astray, and therefore once when he go astray, to get him back, it is very expensive. And that is what happened to Rono. Rono was stationed in Kapenguria, West Pokot County. In the line of duty, more than 10 of his colleagues were killed by cattle rustlers. He is lucky to have survived, though events are still vivid on his mind. Some police officers, they engage in taking a look. Therefore, once when I'm stressed, let me go to a look. Once when I'm, I'm, I'm stressed, let me go to cigarette. Once when I'm uh, stressed, let me go and take the, 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 the bullet. Let me kill myself. Let me take my life. And that is not the, 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 the best uh, solution. In July 2014, the National Police Service started a program to offer post-traumatic counseling to police officers in the country. The program, started in Muranga County, was inspired by Sergeant Kimenchu. Kimenchu now travels countrywide, educating and offering counseling to his colleagues on the effects of alcoholism and substance abuse. Stage number five, the need to compassive stage. He also encourages others who are struggling to come forward with their issues. When people see police officers and drunk, they, they tend to, to exaggerate. Look, that is a police officer who is drunk. But they don't know whether he is passing through other things behind the, the behavior that he is doing. Avande, do you have a lot of people who are in the hospital? 
akikunywa ndiye alikuwa anakuwa very active kuwa very concerned just to teach police officers on stress management once when you take alcohol expect addiction and the addiction is there at it is and this when they are going to work they go well they go when they are very sober Beating the bottom it's where by someone needs an assistance paka ushiko mkono tutembee na wewe because unastaga hebu tustage kidogo tunastaga eh any bond unaweza anguka eh sasa mpaka nikubebe unibebe unikubebe for now a period of 6 years here in Muranga county we have not experienced people who are sacked because of alcoholism and that is a way forward everyone deserves a second chance in life a chance to prove the better version of yourself the former alcoholics have developed an optimistic outlook and are determined to make the most in this second chance in life despite having been dismissed it is still my passion to go back to uh, my former employer that is uh, the TSC i'm trying to get this opening in schools so that i can be exposed in a school setup ile kitu naomba ni ni rudisha kazi kwa sababu nimepatilika naweza kusaidia maskari wenzangu kwa maneno ya guiding and counseling i must confirm that i'm jobless to date and i'm pleading for any connections to any job that is related to finance or any meaningful engagement that can help me restart my life hii ni bangi na bangi ni mbaya Baya. Sergeant Kimenchu says he won't rest until more alcoholics get help so that we can save this nation and also we can have a better environment for these young and men young men and ladies who can be the best leaders tomorrow